Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the original Next Level Gaming Podcast. Welcome in on this wonderful Sunday evening. And uh, say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. <laughs> we want to welcome in our guest tonight. Uh, he's been here before, and um, we're delighted to have him back. Mr. Rick Lagnese from War Horse Studios. What's up, brother? Hey, hello, guys. Thank you for having me back. I look forward to our wonderful session here. So, Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great because um, I know you wanted to. I know you wanted to jump back on with us, uh, and I know we got uh, you know Gamescom and stuff like that. So we thought we'd we'd wait until you were done, and and then uh, you hit me up uh, during the week, and it was like great. Yeah, let's get you in here. We love have yeah. we loved having you last time, and uh, we're delighted that you're coming back. So, Absolutely, excited. So, Thank you. Uh, the globe the globe trotter. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. So. Say that. So, how was Gamescom? It was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I had such a great time, but the uh, the thing that stuck out the most was I didn't have no dang suitcase. <laughs> 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 Don't at all. It sucks. You, you travel light, travel right. No, borrowing underwear. And <laughs> I was gonna say, man, you can't brush your teeth. I don't know about all that. Can I borrow your underwear? Or, hey, uh, CEO of. Warhorse Studios, can I borrow your socks? Uh, you know, uh, it was it was interesting, but it was a great time. Very busy. Uh, we got number numero uno game of the show, PC game of the show. So that Very was fantastic. Nice. Mm. Yeah, nice. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, very excited. And uh, you should you be. Know. I mean, that's that's really cool. And that's and it's a you know you know how we feel about the game. It's it's one that's on our uh, high on our anticipation list. So. Mm-hmm. Um, hearing that's great news. Yeah, glad to hear it. We're still on. We're still on track, right? <laughs> yes, we're still on track. In fact, what a Valentine's Day! Here's my plug. What a Valentine's Day gift for the lady or the guy, or whatever. Because February two, uh, February thirteenth, twenty eighteen, is going to be uh, an interesting day for Kingdom Come Deliverance and their fans and the backers yeah. and the soon to be fans after the show and this during guy. the show. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Excited. Well, great. And so, welcome. You know, welcome back. And uh, well, of course, you know, Gamescom was a few weeks ago. But uh, so, what's the what's the atmosphere at Gamescom like? We always we always hear about it. We always you know it, it, it always gets balanced against E three. So you've been to both. What's, yeah. Well, you know, you have E three, which is I mean, you know, just. Last year, the public was there. Well, you know, some some of the public was there, which is very new and mixed results. Um, whereas Gamescom is, you know, yeah, you have the press for like a day or so or whatever, and then it's wide open to the masses. You're you're, you're talking, you know, hordes and hordes of people. You're thinking you're playing, you know, some zombie game, and you're just walking through the hordes trying to survive, you know, <laughs> to get to the next game. To get food, some people say screw the food. There's no time, you know. So, but you know, I, I don't um, get to see too much of that, especially in the beginning, uh, with the exception of this past year, which was interesting. But because I, I did about 95% of the presentations to the press while our PR manager Toby um, <clears throat> was able to do a bunch of live interviews because there was a lot of that going on, and not just live interviews, but uh, we had we had two rooms in the in the business booth. And so one room was with Dan Varvro, which is awesome because a lot of people got to interview him. But yeah, Gamescom is absolute madness. Uh, you're exhausted, but there was a lot of nice, even after glow parties, talking to people in the industry. Uh, but it, it, you know, it's even a little more. How can I say this? As chaotic as it is, it's a little more. I don't know how you want to say this. Maybe a little more slightly laid back in the respect that we have like our own section where we can get food. We don't have to kind of fight through the masses to get food. So for the press, you can like with Deep Silver. Actually, it's because of Deep Silver, and they, you know, you go through, you know, you, you, you know, cut through this way and this way, and then you get the food and like you get the sandwiches and stuff, sun dried tomatoes, which is actually pretty good. Sun dried tomatoes, uh, I love with anything. So if I have sun dried tomatoes in the sandwich, doesn't matter what else is in there, give me those babies and I'm good. Nice. So nice. yeah, it was eventful, and I, I feel like I'm still slightly recovering. That's that's how much it beat up <laughs> on me. So. Was, is it better, or, would you say it's better organized then than like an E3? 
Oh. That's I don't not that doesn't make throw someone under the bus. I'm just saying. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like they thought about the presenters a lot. And how I just up. I just thought of an easy answer out of this because uh, a way out because of Deep Silver, and I mean this. They made it so much more easier for us uh, by setting things up. We used to have to go in and set everything up, and then you know we're preparing for this, this, and that. Obviously, we're preparing when we're at the hotel as well for like what Toby and I are going to say in our presentation and, and, and prior to as well, of course, but you know, Toby coming from Czech Republic, coming from the United States, you know, we need to do preparation in person. Hey fellas, good to see you Rick again. Good to see you too. Viper strike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to multitask, but no, uh, it, it deep silver helped us out so much. Um, that it just made it much more easy going. Even they, they did all the cleanup pretty much afterwards. It's like, oh my goodness, we don't have to clean up. Thank God. Let's get out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that helped a lot. Nice. Awesome. Sweet. So um, gets number one. Uh, was it number one PC game or number one over? P, uh, PC game. And RPG, we were, anything? Um, and we were an RPG of the, the show. I mean, I don't know if they try to pick one for each. I don't know how that works. You know, I don't even, who knows. But I, what I know is that we were competing in uh, for, uh, let's see, Destiny 2, um, Warhammer, Assassin's Creed. And all those games, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly with Warhammer with every, well, it's just coming out PS4 and Xbox. But, you know, you know, Destiny, Assassin's Creed, Xbox One, PS4. You know, and so are we and PC. So it's like they're all coming on the same platforms, and we still were able to take away, run away with the PC game of the show. So nice. Those are those are heavy hitting titles too. Yeah. Those, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Those are we're talking about big guns. I mean, Destiny yes. Two is one of the higher anticipated PC games. Um, you know, because of Destiny One, and so to yeah to 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 go up against those guys and and come away with it, man. That's that's impressive. Yeah, thank you. So, I mean, a lot of hard work. Now, did you show uh, console versions off at Gamescom? At we all? we did. Um, you were able to play, uh, well, at least in, in the press booth, we had uh, PS4 and PC. And then um, in, in the booth, it was using a PC with an Xbox controller. But we showed off the PS4 Pro version of uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance at E3 and Gamescom. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right. Definitely. Um, all right. So uh, we'll, uh, you know, we're we're gonna keep looking looking towards that game, and uh, um, you know, I think all of us here uh, have Xbox One X is coming. So obviously, I think that's the platform we're likely gonna get it on. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So there are. I mean, they're they're enhancing that, right? We talked about that last time. There are. Xbox One X enhancements. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Now it's it is more official. It's on their Xbox One enhanced list, so okay. it will be for the One X. Yeah, yeah we you nice. you sort of kind of were they hesitant say about it, about saying anything <laughs> about it the last time, so it's good to. Yeah, only because we weren't even sure, like you know, if we're getting it, uh, if we're gonna be able to have time to enhance it. And, you know, we were able to be able to do that for oh. also on the PS4. As All right, well. so what pro what pro and X enhancements are are they getting? So give up because we have uh, we have people that have both. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, pretty much the the answer that I can at least say is that it's going to be enhanced, meaning it's you know it's going to look slightly better, of course, and it's uh, you know smoother. But as far as exacts, well, that's why we're still getting the game ready in time for February. I mean, we're still hammering things out. There, are, I can't even tell you the amount of hours everyone's putting in. I mean, I don't honestly, I don't even put in as much time as those guys do. And in, in, in the office, um, but even I'm putting in more time than I normally do, and we just there's a lot to get done, so we're hammering everything out. We want to get it looking as good as possible. So okay, I mean, are you guys? I and you know, speak. I don't know. Speaking out of term, are you guys looking at 4K as one of the enhancements? Or are you trying to just do maybe? Um, you know, something in between with more foliage. I mean, I, you know, there's people, people try to hash out what the enhancements are all the time. And, um, mm. all the people with 4k TVs want everything to be in 4k. Those of us with 1080p don't really care, but well, yeah. is that, are you shooting for 4k? Well, we've come out and said that, uh, we're, we're able to get ready for 4k in time, but you know, if you guys have seen the game, uh, you don't see a lot of, you know, how can I say this? 
you with the cry engine i mean our game just looks incredible on pc and if anyone's played any game on the cry engine on any platform it, it's a very impressive i mean i i've said this before i've I, I like to bring up like rise not not just crisis and the obvious but rise was it's still such a gorgeous looking mm -hmm. game and then you have kingdom come deliverance that's going to be upscaled you know so yes 4k is great and at the same time you're going to look at this game you're going to get lost, like, in a good way, in, in the forests and the woods, the, the cricks, the river, the streams. It's just, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And I just the can't... The architecture. Wait. Yeah, the architecture. Yeah. There's a lot of work. The digital paintings, everything looks gorgeous. So I just mm. I just can't wait for people to see it when it's finally opti fully optimized, ready to go next February. This February. You say Bohemia, I say I want to go to there. Yeah. Frankie is asking yeah. if it is at least 60 frames per second. <laughs> it's at least 60 frames per second we're going to get running as fast as we can on every platform and that's <laughs> well, fantastic high gear baby we'll see that yeah, is we'll a fantastic that. answer that is yeah I like that <laughs> yeah, see that Frankie great. that's why you're not here anymore sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that, that, is a chat, textbook, that is a textbook <laughs> press answer that's the answer that I've been that I've been waiting for <laughs> Go this fast we can. Whatever we no, can. it's it's all good. I look, it's uh, I yeah. it's it's not a first person shooter and Destiny seems to be able to do it fine if it's not six it's fine. It's I think people get I I think what people get caught up in is um, you know the number game. Yeah. And, sure. and there, I mean, there is a there's a tangible difference between thirty and sixty. I think we all know that. But if the game comes out to solid thirty and it's not, it doesn't look like it. You know, when you get to the crick, that it doesn't you know start juddering and knocking around. Then then I, I'm I'm fine with it. I, I can well, deal with yeah. that. And perspective too is it, it's obviously like you said it's not a first person shooter. But then even in the beta, when you're having all these guys go at it on screen. And that's a lot going on when you have archers and then horseback soldiers. There's, there's a lot going on there. So, it, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, obviously the very best we can. And I, like I said, I can't wait for people to see it, especially for people who've just had their hands on the beta because we, we've come such a long, long way. So I'm excited. That's awesome. Well, we only when have comes, a yeah. When it comes to history like that, I don't mind. You know, you got it hint at the details more than you have to care about, you know, oh, is it 4K? I mean, if you, you have to fit every little thing back there to make us feel like we're actually back there again. Absolutely. Hey, back there again. When were you there? Mm. Oh, well, as us as people, <laughs> living things, I mean, if he makes us feel like we're back there, I mean, that's he did his job, right? Right. I, yeah. I was able to go to some of the sites when I went to, you know, Czech Republic, because in Gamescom again, you know, I not just go to Germany, but afterwards I go to the studio. Um, it's like an, I don't know, an eight hour drive or something from Cologne, Germany and going to Sazava, the, the, seeing the monastery, it's just, it's incredible just seeing, oh my goodness, if it's like you're in the game right now. So we were like in game squared, you know, like it was really uh, awesome. special to see that. And the, the, the detail is, is phenomenal. So, mm -hmm. That's what I like awesome. to hear. That is awesome. All right, well, um, also, since you're here, and we'll start with you, and then we'll make our way around to the other uh, gentleman cool. who uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to yet. <laughs> what you playing? Uh, a couple couple of games. I'm still playing. Uh, last time we even talked, still working on Ghost Recon, and that's because I'm, I play it on and off, and then I play uh, recently Cuphead, of course, with my kids, and... The ever so infamous son of a gun, I will hang myself ten times over. It's all your fault, Quest for Dungeons game. <laughs> <laughs> that I, game. Yeah, th uh, that game, um, I've played it, um, but more, it, this is really cool. It's a neat little anecdote. So we got the game um, a while back, um, and uh, yeah, I followed a developer on Twitter, so told him about we did a I did a uh, a playthrough with it and then my son got a hold of it and he probably put f three to four times the amount of hours I did into that game okay and um, you know because it's as you know the, the the game is procedural so 
you start it over and it's all different. Yes. Um, he could just play it, play it, and play it, and play it. And he's telling me about the game and telling me about things that I didn't even get the chance to see. So uh, I told I told the dev, and um, he sent my he sent my son a t shirt that he wears to school. And it was no really way. really cool, especially since he's overseas. Um, I can't remember uh. where he is. Um, I'm trying to look him up while I'm talking to you, but um, it's just it was it was just one of those really cool things that um, you know I know the the, the game myself, but it was yeah. um, you know it was my son that really got the got the thing running. So and he got a shirt out of it, which is nice. <laughs> I was just looking at it. That looks like switch bait to me. That's gonna end up on my switch, I think. Oh, that's what I've been playing it on. I'm actually like in the top ten right now. I've been playing that game so much. Nice. No. Yeah, that, nice. that looks really. I, I checked it out on Steam. It looks pretty <laughs> cool. I love that art style. I, I'm a sucker for all that. So. Yeah, it, it is, is cool. A story with that, if I may, or yes, please. So I saw uh, someone on Twitter, Super Nintendo, as he goes by, and like, wow, this actually, I, I didn't know anything about the game. It looked like a 2D Zelda game, so I didn't care even what style. I'm like, this is going to probably be like Zelda, so I, I bought it right away. And I'm playing this, and I'm like, oh, no, it's freaking turn-based. And I'm not a big fan of turn-based, so I'm like, oh, no, I'm probably not going to like this. Hour goes by. And I keep dying, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to beat this. <laughs> and, and by the way, I play on the hell mode, okay? And so... You know, I'm getting through to the to the very end, and there's the Grim Reaper looking guy, and that son of a bee he casts this thing <laughs> on, death, and it's like it's like a death thing, a death thing. So like you have 40 moves and then you die. I'm like, what the hell is this? I, I have 40 moves. What, what do I even do? I don't even know how to beat the game. I figure if I maybe if I beat this guy, so I'm like, I gotta go all out, and you know, without trying to go on and on, like when you have these turns, yeah, you can try and heal yourself but when you're like butted up right next to each other like it's kind of hard to run away because he can hit you from a few blocks away it's just hard to explain but bottom line is it was like my almost my last move before the automatic death and he has no health and i have no health and he keeps dodging me so i'm like this is it and i hit him and i then all of a sudden i die and he dies at the same time and then it, <laughs> And I've heard that like over and over and over, <laughs> and oh my goodness! So then, when you beat the first two, like I, I deleted the game. I was so mad at the game, <laughs> and then I reinstalled it, and then I deleted it again, and then I reinstalled it again, and I beat the first two. And I know I'm in the last one. And the last uh, stage, uh, you know, temple or dungeon or whatever, is so hard. <sighs> It, it, you, you actually have to lure the enemies into like this trap because you, you're not even strong enough to beat them and you have to lure them back and you have to run around and make them run into this trap. It, again, it's hard to explain but it being that it's turn-based, you move, then they move, right? So then you right. get them to right. follow you. So do, 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 do. Run into the trap, 12 hit points gone. Run around, 12 hit points gone. They have to keep luring them in because you can't attack them. <laughs> this is insane! I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Like you're you're, you're kind of telling that. me something my kid told me. <laughs> the hours in. It's terrible. It's I would addictive. have to put you in touch with him so you guys can you guys can talk strategy because I totally it's I really honestly understand what you're saying because I heard the same thing. Uh, <laughs> so, like, interesting game. Yeah, agreed. And and the turn based thing catches you by surprise because you're not expecting it. No, no, you're not. So. All it's right. just amazing. I have all these quality games, and then I get stuck, and I have all these games I told you guys I'd have to catch up on, and then I'm playing this really simple game, and it's taking up more time than any of the other ones. And my friend's like, hey, you going to jump on Ghost Recon? I'm like, be right there. Anyways, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ad for Quest for Dungeons has been brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, how do you top that, Peter? How do you top that? Um, well, I played Cuphead, died a couple of times. A couple? Oh, just a couple? <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. I, mean, I had a video it's, of you. It's it was a, more than a couple. Yeah, no. <clears throat> and uh, it's a fantastic game. It is. It's, um, what I like about it is well, like even though you know it's tell you it's, what. it's it's hard. All right, I was gonna I was gonna wait, but. You're forcing it on me. 
No. Uh oh. Tell you what. Uh-oh. Are you going to show me how I over, die a lot? Yeah, just go over <laughs> go over what you were playing first, and then that's that's going to be the first game we talk about. So other than that, what are you playing? I played some uh, Pinball FX3 the, uh, <clears throat> that came out last week, and uh, I also bought the... Um, uh, what are these uh, tables? With E.T. and uh, oh, Jaws. The, um, oh, yeah. Uh, Back to the Future. It. Yeah, the movie Universal, 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 right? Yeah, the Universal uh, collection, uh, absolutely awesome. That's, they did a really good job. If you like pinball, that's, that's those yeah, are my, I, right now my my three favorite tables. I think I enjoyed the second one a lot. Really liked the uh, wizard table and the and there was a like a private eye mirror oh, like, yeah, sci fi right. mystery one that was good. Star Wars one's really solid too. Street Fighter, so yeah, I, I, that's on the list. I'd like to pick that up. I, yeah, they do a pretty, pretty, pretty sweet job with those tables. Right. My favorite table, I think, was the uh, Buccaneer, which is an FX one, and oh, yeah. they are not making that one, remaking that one, or for uh, two as well as three. So a little bit nice. bummed out because uh, not, li- not nice. Yeah, not unfortunately, nice. now. And because uh, it's my favorite, I don't know. I just like pirate, pirates and pirate theme. Sure. Uh, let's see what other games I played. Well, Destiny Two, obviously, no. obviously for too many hours. <laughs> the addiction continues. The addiction continues. That's a lot of fun, you know, playing with uh, with uh, Nate, and it's like you know, playing that every night. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that makes it. I think that makes it more fun than than yeah, so perhaps now it everyone is. knows I don't what know. I played, so you can go on the crazy one. Oh yeah, sorry, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Steal your thunder once again. <laughs> no, uh, that's good. yeah. Well, I'm going to steal uh, steal uh, crazy one's uh, thunder as well. Played some uh, for some Motorsport Seven. Rock on, rock on. Yes, also awesome. I let uh, crazy one uh, do some more on that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good. Uh, Good solid. Version. And don't feel bad. Me and HDK do not hate you. The parties just have not been working for. <laughs> oh, the party chip. Yeah, yeah, when you're in the uh, alpha build, it's horrible. Yeah, I've been able to use parties uh, and, and play a game at the same time. Yeah, I gave up on that too. It was it, it was a little tough, and I felt bad because I wanted, I was like, man, these guys, these guys. I was actually playing games a couple of nights, and I'm like, I can't even get on to tell them. I can't even get on to talk to them. <laughs> They're yeah, supposedly no, coming a, out with one yesterday and tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't know if it's did they fix anything. I mean, oh, they obviously oh, did. There's is no it, lag. Is it, is it working? It's still there's lag. no lag anymore. Oh, but no, I don't know if I can no hear lag. you. So oh, okay. I think they only fixed the lag, not the. Okay. Fix the poor functionality. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's one step in the right direction, but. Rick, you another the, step. Are you, are you in the insider program? Me? Yeah. Yes. Are you having Are any in the alpha? With your... In the alpha one? Yes. Are you having any party issues? Um, no, actually, I feel like it's very streamlined. I used to have issues before in the previous build before this one, so I'm lucky. It could also be destiny for my part. Yeah, but that I think that might be uh, have a little bit to do with it. It's oh. like almost instant now. It goes right. You go right into the party. Uh, there's. I used to have Mike. Uh, again, in the previous build, it was um. Oh my goodness, all the issues with sound, it mm. was like, I can't hear you, then we have to get out and go jump back in, so I don't know, I, I, I like said I'm lucky, because now I'm good. Yeah. <clears throat> Rank must have I'm going to blame it on the, I'm going to blame it on Destiny, then. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We can try again tonight after the update. True. Oh, I'm yeah, going to play yeah. Cuphead for a little bit afterwards, so I can jump out with you guys just to... Yeah, Bill, whose name escapes me, and I'm sorry, Bill, on Twitter, uh, he's with the preview program. Uh, he said that the, the, the next uh, update was around party and chat issues. Yeah. All right. So maybe they're. Maybe so they hopefully it's going to be uh, fixed after today. Will be nice. All right. Yeah, because there was a point that I said like I'm I'm just going to get out of the preview program. But they're not going to fix it in a timely fashion because. Yeah. yeah. Everyone thinks we hate them. It's not yeah. True. <laughs> That's what all the <laughs> chat. Sorry, guys. All us. <laughs> Hey. But, um, yeah, so let's see. Any other games I've played? <clears throat> I think that might be uh, about it. All right. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, Nate, what about you? Oh, 
that's pretty much it for me too. I did see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since we talked about the game, but well, what movie already. did you what what movie did you see? Uh, American Made, the Tom Cruise one. Oh, how that was that? A true story. Oh, I can't believe that. That's that's that dude's life, man. Am I wrong in thinking that the character he's portraying was portrayed in uh, Narcos? Is that the same? Because it um, had a. I'm not sure if it's the same person, but I know everyone's in it that's in Narcos. Like, I don't know if his character is, but the three guys he works with are. Huh. Right. Interesting. So you probably would like it too. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like something I'd get. I'd get into. I, I don't. I don't hate. I don't uh, dislike. You know, Tom Cruise in in his acting. No, yeah. me either. And he did all his um, plane stunts in that movie. So. I, like, I don't. I don't like his emotions though. He's always. He always looks the same. That's yeah. <laughs> Except Tom Cruise looking sad. Himself, the same. Well, that's part of his. That, I think same. that's part of his allure, though, is that he's that way all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. And he's he's got that rugged look to him, you know. The I mean, I've enjoyed him. I've enjoyed him ever since Mission Impossible movies, and um, even some of his uh, more probably second tier movies, like. Um, well, no love for Maverick. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true, Maverick. But oh, to me, Val Kilmer was that movie. In They're my supposed opinion. to be making a sequel, though. They, I know they are. Uh, he also is timeless. It's it seems he he's aging very well, which could be yeah, the Scientology. I was gonna say it's that it's it's because he's so close to clear. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but he. Did you guys ever see well. Jack Reacher? Yes. yes. No, yeah. I, mean, I did not see Jack Reacher. The second one. No. The, no, don't. The second one was so bad I couldn't finish it. Oh wow. wow. <laughs> he's not even the main character. That's how bad what? it is. And if he oh, is, yeah. well, if he is, they did such a bad job. <laughs> I, you almost have, no, I'm not, don't. I'm just glad I have another movie, buddy. You can talk, if this was a, yeah, definitely. But Edge of Tomorrow, he was really good in that one, and I think they're making a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow, so that's, you see that one? Yeah. Aliens. Another good one. Uh, Emily Blunt, I think, is with him. Yeah, she was great. Yep. You know what I finally got around to seeing, and it's not a, um, it's not a Tom Cruise movie, but, um, uh, sad because, you know, there's a third one apparently coming out, and I haven't even seen the other two. I finally got a chance to see John Wick. Oh yeah, mm. so oh, good! That's Holy good. crap! That <laughs> I just watch that on loop. <laughs> good grief! That first that that first movie was just, and and he and he did his own gun work, which is even more impressive to me. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you've seen the YouTube videos of that guy on the range of uh, Keanu. There, he's he's proficient. He's legit. Yeah, he is. Uh, I tell you, the brilliant thing about John Wick was right off the bat. They mess with the dog, and you don't give an F. Whatever else happens in the movie, they have it coming from that point. Yep. You're just free to just, yep. just revel at him, effing them all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to agree with that. That was, that was, um, and my wife was watching it with me at least for the first half, and um, and then she, you know, she was like, "Yeah, all right, I'll I'll finish it maybe another time," but as soon as as soon as the dog, she was like, "Oh no." She's like, I hope he, I hope he kills every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And they beat the shit out of him too. Let's not. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah, just. I mean, it's not good, but it wasn't just. As soon as just it messes the dog, dog it, you know, it's on. At that point, the audience can, can can just get behind whatever happens to him. Yeah, I had no problem with that. I had no problem with that. So anyway, the second movie I have to see. Oh, um, that movie's out of control. That movie's even more insane. Like, the first one I actually like better, but the second one is even more action, more gruesome. It's out of control. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Just wait. Do you remember in the second one, the, the single-handed, like, leaning into it gunshot or uh, stop, shotgun? Stop, 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 yeah. stop. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> oh, it's not, it's, not, it's not a plot point. It's not like a spoiler. It's just a fantastic piece of of gun gymnastics that he does. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> the <shotgun>? gun? <laughs> right. Go <laughs> Good gun gymnastics. gymnastics. I'm not, I know I'm serious. Like <laughs> no, you're right. That's the only way to describe it. Yeah, I mean we're talking about like reaching under the rail with the other arm to get the you know it's just I, you know I don't I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, but, please don't. Yeah, I I want to see it. I really do want to see it. Yeah, you know, I was. Too bad another, we don't live together. We could all like go see the third one close. In another lifetime, I was a U.S. Marine, and I I like firearms. I like marksmanship the art of it but yeah i was never as proficient as <laughs> counter reeves is it's crazy i just his 
You know, I he, he's he's kind of the same guy in every movie in in a way, but the fact that he is so intense, I give him a pass for it. He's just that good. And yep. and to think, he was Bill and Ted. Right. <laughs> I mean, he was Bill. He was Ted. Bill. I, and then then and then he got and then he got the Matrix and then all was I mean he even did that movie um, Hardball about the about the the baseball team uh, the little league baseball team he took over and people forgot about that movie in a heartbeat because the Matrix. Yeah, he does a lot and he's good at it. No, so, and he's like a rock guitar player too. On top of all that, and he have a band. Definition of a man, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I digress. Uh, <coughs> somehow we got from uh, your movie to John Wick to Keanu Reeves. Yep. So, all right. So, uh, Juan, what have you been playing? I've been playing Cuphead, which is fantastic. Uh, it's just, it just oozes we'll get out there. of every we'll crevice. Get there. We'll get it there. Oozes. I promise. We'll get there. All right. So, we did that. Um, Halo Wars 2, Awakening the Nightmare Expansion hit, and I got that. Yep. It's, Video's up I on the site. Yep, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. For 20 bucks. you get a whole Banished versus Flood campaign. And the Flood are back. Who doesn't love that as a Halo fan? Um, the, the, the cinematics between are uh, blur. So just like if you've if you played through Halo Wars and you've seen the ridiculously awesome cinematics between the things, it's on that level. It's that good. The uh, scene on the, the last part of the video that's up is the scene where the Flood are unleashed. And you get a little clash between the Flood and the Banish, and it's fantastic. Uh, and it's Halo Wars too. I enjoy that gameplay a lot too. So then there's all of that, and it ha- adds a multiplayer mode. It adds a, 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 a co-op, um, like a like a tower defense type mode. So real, I think it's a sweet deal for twenty, uh, just like Cuphead. Uh, additionally, I finish up, and this is so old news, but I finish up uh, Shadowrun Returns on my phone, my Android. It's wow. uh, Hairbrain Studios RPG. And I don't know if any of you have messed with it, but it's like better than a mobile game has any right being. Okay. It's, it, and I was it I was a tabletop Shadowrun player for a long time. I love the whole setting and universe, and it captures that really well. So much better than the travesty that was Shadowrun on the 360. Because um, as much as it was a good shooter mechanically, <clears throat> it was just a crime to take that IP and turn it into that, in my opinion. And of course, Forza. Which is everyone knows I'm a Forza nut, um, and so was had to do that day one. I had I had thought maybe I'd wait for the X, but nah, it's okay. I'll just upgrade when, when I get that when it comes. I just I just want to get out there and give it a go. And it's it's great. It's fantastic. It it uh, has some people wondering if they need an X because it looks that good on the on the Xbox One. It looks great. Runs 60 lock like crazy. I think Turn 10 does an amazing job of showing that you know frame rate can be a design choice if you are willing to make it the religion and because it's just it's just rock solid um drives really well the driving is is as good as it's ever been in forza um the, the physics of it there's been a lot of talk about the multiple uh, that the um changes of loot crates and things like that i actually did a video on that for my channel on the youtube so check that out i i, I broke down i did two races tonight and, and recorded them one in forza more short six and a mirrored settings like same number lap same course same settings for difficulty and 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 the different mods between the two different games and such and kind of highlighted the differences and contrasted to see if there was if there was any <laughs> stuff going on with the economy of the game if, if the addition of these loot boxes made it so you earn money less and uh, found that it's pretty much the same but it's worth it's worth a look if you want to kind of deep dish, dig on what's different in the the mods and and microtransactions that are going to be in Forza this year, but yeah, uh, it's been that. That's my thing. I had a, I had a race last night. I thought about all day today, where uh, one of the cool things they added in seven actually is the ability to uh, lengthen single player campaign mode races. And why that's important is if you are like me and you want to have the difficulty high and you you, you crank up your drive avatar difficulty and you turn down your your assists. Sometimes just having two laps, like most races, or two or three laps, depending on the length of the course, isn't really enough to chase down the top guy through a field of good drivers because you're going to start in 11th or 12th. Right? So if you can t- 
turn that to long and turn that to a seven, eight lap race, then you can you don't have to try and get four, four cars passed on the first race. You can drive cleanly, patiently. You can have that good racing experience and still be able to have enough laps to chase down first place. So that's what happened. I went to uh, Virginia International Raceway, and uh, that the club or the short track there is very much like a roller coaster, fun track. It's up and down and left and right. And I, uh, setting it to long sets it for 13 laps. I started in 11th, and I got the first place guy on the 12th lap. I mean, it was, I could get maybe one car a lap, and it was right down to it. And it was, it, you know, that long, spending the time on it's like a 20 minute run. You got you to gotta maintain your driving and your, your skill with it throughout the whole thing. One slip, one missed break point, or whatever, and you could be in the, in the grass and the weeds. And a thunderstorm rolls in because it now has dynamic weather. Yeah, and, you know, right. Fog. I mean, it was just epic as hell. It was like the, it was the craziest single player race I've had in Forza since I started playing it. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, you have those patches of fog <clears throat> that you encounter. That's so awesome. Yeah, it's it's come a long way since yeah. since it, since the Xbox. And of course, I you know me, uh, I'm such a sap for this kind of stuff. But my you know they they show more of the driver in this version. You see more of the person in your suit, and I'm rocking the the suit that has the logos from the first game because I'm at tier 11 on the rewards page. So. I'm one of the few people who have that access to that particular race suit with the original Ford, Forza Motorsport on it. And, you know, I'm geeking out over it. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, seriously. I mean, I didn't get that race done on the first try. There was a little bit of cursing. I did. I missed a rigging point. I ended up in a wall. I don't play with a rewind, so you know you have to start over. But when I got it done, man, I tell you, it was like, it was like beating a boss in Cuphead. It was like, yes, I did it. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, if you're into racing, it's I think it's going to be the racing game this year. Right. It's just too polished and too <laughs> too content rich and too uh, too great to just not be. Well, we talked last week about the richness of the content. That was for sure. Um, you know, and uh I, I there are a couple of reviews out already. Uh, we'll see. You know, uh, I'm curious as to what it. What, what is it? The Ultima Edition got it early. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. it, it, four days early for the people who pre-ordered the Ultima Ed, which is my one. I, I don't pre-order a lot, but um, with turn ten, you you can't go wrong. They're yeah, and, and you no, you the, can't. The other one too. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh. it's it's funny too because going back to Motorsport series, <clears throat> having played you know Forza Horizon Three a ton, um, you you really get a feel for the difference too about how much you can get away with driving in Forza Horizon Three. That Forza Motorsport, you know, it's like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Demands you do better. Um, that it does because yeah. yeah, that was my issue, most likely with the uh, with getting back to when I was playing the demo was. Um, oh my god, the car doesn't quite control the same. No, well, it they start off with an aggressive Porsche, though. Yeah. yeah. And I if think... you don't have traction control in there, because I, you know, I went in there immediately into the settings and turned everything off, and it's like, man, I was like burning rubber down there. Yeah, in the demo, the Porsche is an unruly, it's a cantankerous yeah. thing. You can really haul beans in it, but if you step wrong to it if you cross it in any way it will kill you it'll just nope you're oh, yeah. into the wall and that's and that's high performance cars i mean uh you know, I've, I've done some racing i've i've raced on actual race tires it's interesting because everyone thinks race tires are you know grippy and they are but they're really really unforgiving like your street tires when you go into a corner they'll squeal and complain and they'll let you know all all about that you're pushing them until they break and let go Race tires are cool. They're cool. They're cool. You're done, and uh, and that's kind of how that Porsche is. <clears throat> and the Porsche is an unforgiving bitch. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> See, and and what's funny is Juan. When I was talking about it on Twitter, Juan is saying, "Well, you know, you got to do this to the back and this to the front." On well, the demo, <laughs> you can't. There's no sure. there's no tuning in the demo. So right. those of us who were playing in the demo because we didn't get it early. Uh, we didn't. We didn't have that luxury. <laughs> no, I mean you can do things automotively to make it less, uh, make it a little more forgiving. If you soften the back end, if you uh, soften up the spring rates in the back, if you um, 
they put some more negative camera on the back wheel so they tilt in like so. They get more grip in the turn. Uh, there's, there's, you know, automotive stuff if you know you can do to it. But, but yeah, from the demo, it's um, it's a handful, and so much more so than the other things in the in the in the demo. The truck is weighty and grippy, and in a way that the the Porsche just isn't. Oh yeah, no doubt. And uh, the video that we have, um, which was the gameplay, was was uh, truck. So. I'm, yeah, the, the truck was fun to drive, though. Yeah, yeah I think it's a cool app. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm 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 looking forward to to playing with those more. They they have a cool, uh, they have a, a cool sound, and I love the um, the diesel kind of low RPM, high torque, lots of gear shifts, uh, technical to drive. But a demo car was a beast, though. Like I left everybody in the dust, and I cranked up the uh, drive guitars, and it's like I'm still left them in the dust. Part of that too might have been you may be have more familiarity with Magello where that was uh, the setting than the um, Dubai track because yeah. the Dubai yeah, track I guess so, my yeah. rear too. I yeah. don't know how many times on Dubai like oh no that's not right on the gas because there's a wall there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I, yeah, it definitely helps uh, track you know yeah, recognizing I can't tell the you track. How many, you. how many times I rewound from that stupid tire wall right before the uh, tunnel? Right before the tunnel in Dubai, that was that was rough. But yeah, but once you look figured at that, it out, you see like the sand drifting across the track and everything. Uh, it's just come such a long way. Yeah, it really yeah. has. I, I agree. I'm still, I'm still sort of. I don't know if it's um, part of its backlog and stuff, but I'm still a little motorsported out. So I'm probably gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get it. Probably gonna wait a little <coughs> while. Um, I want to do some other games. Um, you know that, that I've been neglecting thanks to work and things like that. So yeah. and uh, so, uh, Cuphead was also what I was playing a lot of. So and I got a, I got a, finally got a good bit of it in today. Uh, so that's where let's switch gears here. And oh, and whoever doesn't have Cuphead or the Halo Wars DLC, Amazon is running a thing. If you try out their uh, music, Amazon Music. You get a free ten dollar gift card to use on anything, so that makes Cuphead ten dollars or Halo Wars DLC ten dollars. Oh, that's great! So, that's great deal. Oh, sweet! Anyone right. interested? I think I'll put the link in the our Discord. That way, everybody can find it. All right, very cool. Um, and by the way, um, uh, bu- 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 let's see. Here it is. Um, we'll have a better. Uh, more full Cuphead video on the YouTube channel. I kind of pieced together a little bit of Peter's uh, gameplay, and then I'm going to take... And I took the full gameplay that I didn't chop for purposes of time for the podcast, and that's going to go up. So, um, hey, before we uh, before we get uh, into that, I want to... Um, didn't get a chance at the beginning. I want to say hello to everybody in the chat room, um, to all of our regulars, of course, and welcome back, uh, Jabril. I know he's been busy with school and stuff like that. It's good to have you in, Jeff. I just saw you jump in, and of course, um, you know our our wonderful favorites. Thank you guys for being with us once again. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you're part of the podcast, so be nice. <laughs> all right, I, this game, I, I'll, I, I don't even, I just don't even know. H T K, he's in the game. Graveyard, I just want to let it run for a sec. Excellent. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Well, Cuphead and I mean, Cowboy Man, they like to roll the or, dice. Over here. By chance they came yeah, well, you know, I do a, a daily music pick. You know, those days that I remember most of them anyway, and uh, this was this opening theme with the barbershop quartet sound with the. Cuphead and his pal Mugman. That was the the pick yesterday. It's just it's like everything about the game. It's perfectly fitting. Just I, I could watch. The, I, I just stood. I just sat and watched it. Yeah. I mean, just the, just the art style too. You know the whole package. You know, the art style and the music and stuff. It's, and it just, yeah, I'm so glad they took their time with it. And yeah, it's, it's not just the boss the boss rush and they. You know, and you hear you hear people say things like, you know, Microsoft kills 
creativity and they stifle what people want to do right. with their programs and, and you know, right. blah blah blah. Yeah. This is this is evidence to the contrary of that. This yeah. is people who they you get know, it? They quit their get jobs. It first try? Come on, let's see. Let's Come on, see. Let's, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm bad. My twelve-year-old daughter did it on her second try, so I will nice. definitely see the dead journalists. <laughs> There's no excuse for you, pal. My daughter's not a gamer. No, I have no problem saying that. Nice. Let me just Second try. My daughter barely even plays. She got it. Just saying. <laughs> I was waiting for that too. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And by the way, yeah. this the parry slap is not a double jump. Nope. <laughs> it's really not. I end up. I end up. Some, I, the one of the things that was that that, that gets me sometimes uh, playing it is I keep forgetting there are things I can do in the game such as um, dash and stuff like that that uh, you forget about when you're when you're just running and shooting stuff. But everything about this. It's actually an ach achievement if you hit the uh, parry five times in a row. Right. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't get that achievement. I got the achievement. No, for... me neither. But I. That's what I read on the internet. Okay, because I got the right. achievement for getting. I think it might be a Mac uh, guys. Video. Oh, that clan! I like that clan. No that clan? clan. Oh, <laughs> our Destiny clan. Yeah. So, what what's the deal with? Are those you parry those though, right? The anything that's pink. I anything yeah, pink. I, I I did, did not that. realize that till. Uh, <laughs> and I might have till to go after back. this video. Well, it's not just that, but like when the when the onion came out, I didn't realize that the the red tears you could carry. So yeah, and I guess when you the one where you have to do that is the uh, uh, slot machine with the frogs. I haven't, I haven't made that far yet. I mean, just I can't get over how this game looks. Yeah, it's amazing. And I love well, even the just the the, the little. A little film um, imperfections that make it look like you're watching it, like if you're in a theater. You know, this is the this is the cartoon before the before the motion picture. Sure. The uh, the film grain, yeah. the scratchy kind of uh, LP photograph sound. Yeah. Uh, even like I've, you've been to the uh, pork rinds Imperium. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah, I haven't bought anything yet because yeah. I didn't know what to buy. Well, he's got that great, you know, the great look to pork rind, but then when he speaks, oh, yeah. it's that, that, that overly animated, like, where they, they draw all the tongue waving and everything when he's yeah. talking, like, it's that overly animated talking, and the really kind of hollow, booming, what you call sound. Right, because it's, you know, it, that's what they sounded like, that, that, those early talky cartoons. Yeah. Like, it, like, the first time Mickey Mouse ever talks, it doesn't sound anything like he does today. Right. Yeah, but just, yeah, it's a just a fantastic game. And the soundtrack. Yeah. Yep. I mean, every little thing about the game is cohesive, and yeah, it's just it's just so good. Yeah, the only thing is, like like for instance, in this level, you have to shoot them right in between the eyes, kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, the hit boxes are like pretty, pretty narrow. When I was doing that boss, I was using the the seeking oh. shot and just focusing on dodging. I defeated the boss. Yay. Probably my not first, the fastest first, way to do it. My first boss. Alright. Rick, give us give us the overall chain thoughts. Thoughts. Um, Cuphead? Man. Yeah. Um... I've been playing it with my kids, and not gonna lie, they don't last very long, and I definitely stay on the regular difficulty, because, you know, my whole justification is, hey, listen, if they want to get better, they gotta play it on the harder difficulty, like their pop. <laughs> so, you know, but they love it. They love the music, they love the Disney, because obviously that's what you think about, the old Disney, like Mickey Mouse cartoons, right? Mm -hmm. And Steamboat Willie. Yeah, of course. It's just it's fantastic. So the some of the better ones that we've liked is the and actually the hardest ones that I that I've done so far was the guy in the dang uh, bumper car. This guy down here. Um, he took us a little while, the boss, and then there was another the the dragon. For some reason, I had a harder time with it. But my kids, they die like within ten to thirty seconds. Okay, and. 
you know, it's funny because you think, like, having another player helps, but sometimes the kids jump in the way, or if you're playing a run and gun stage, they are really slow, so I'm like, guys, we gotta keep going, because they keep coming at us, and we gotta jump up, jump down. So then I try and save them, and then you can get hurt trying to save them, so it's like, it's really, but I, I try to, like, realize I'm playing with my kids, I don't need to beat everything, <laughs> I can die too, and... <laughs> You know, like we're excited when we get a B. We've never gotten a grade higher than a B or B minus or something. Because it's it's to get the A or the S or whatever it is for the. I'm gonna have to do that by myself and practice. Because this game is just the challenge is insane, and, and just even the music and everything. I was trying to um, I looked uh, up some guys, musicians on Twitter for this game. The amount of detail and the attention, everything they put into it, reminds me of like what we've done with Kingdom Come Deliverance to bring you to the actual like. Uh, the, the the authenticity of the game, it's, right. it's fantastic. I can't get enough of it. So we're we're in the world three before the final, and you know uh, we've been playing a lot outside because it's nice weather. But when we're inside, it's like Papa, let's play some Cuphead. I'm like, yeah. My wish like, come on, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, we got chores to do. No. So how is it? How is it two player? Um, well, it's not online, of course, right? So right. it's local co-op, and you just sign in as a guest. Um, so, the, well, yeah, so to be in two-player again, um, you know, you play as, uh, you know, Cuphead and the other guys. What's Mugman. the guy's name? Mugman. And, you know, it, it's it's great when we're shooting in the same direction. But like I said, playing with someone else, at least with my kids, I'm trying to either save them or... They're like, Papa, I'm flying away. Jump and save me. I'm like, I can't see you. I can't see you over here. <laughs> so it's up, but it's a lot of fun. I love that I can play this game with the kids. Yeah. And they're like, man, why is the devil in this game, Papa? And I'm like, well, don't make a deal with the devil. Okay? That's the point of the story. Life don't lesson. Don't deal with the devil. <laughs> Rule number one. <laughs> like, is the devil in the back? I'm like, yeah, we get to beat him probably at the end. It's going to be fun. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun playing with the kids, and um, I, I just can't wait till... I'm sure they're going to... I think they've talked about making this game online. But this is, like, one of the ultimate games to play a game in co-op, and it's just... It's, it's great. It's just sometimes it's hard because you can get in the way of each other. Shoot like, him, Peter. I just, what's going on? Bro. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> shoot it. <laughs> Peter, you can hit it again, you know. I can? Yes. Okay, there we go. You can shoot that thing as many times as you want. Oh, no. oh. You know. <laughs> and I died. <laughs> You know, people make the Dark Souls thing, and that's uh, yeah. So everyone says if it's hard, it's like Dark Souls, whatever, right? I will say in, in def you know, that in a way, there's some similarities because a lot of this, it's not random. It's it's definitely the same. Uh, you know, enemies pop out. Yeah, it's very yeah. Yeah, there's a pattern. There's, there. there's definitely a lot of pattern recognition, which is a good part of what Dark Souls is. This this is just a lot faster to get back into it. You know, a little less maybe sloggy or grindy. I think I think. Uh, Dark Souls is actually more of a test of of will than skill, in, in my opinion. And, and you know, because for me, when I went through it a couple of years ago, the first, you know, I, I, I didn't find it, it was it was difficult. I mean, it wasn't like it was, you know, easy, but it wasn't like it was difficult enough. I wanted to quit. If anyone made me want to quit, it was oh, I get to do that slog from bonfire back to boss again, and uh, that that's what was wearing wearing on me. Uh, this, you know, it's so much quicker. So much, you know, the the stages aren't super huge, so you can you can be you can feel like you're making progress faster. In my opinion. Yeah. And and then you when you get that when you get that progress, then you're like, yeah, I'm a badass. <laughs> I rule with this gaming shit. Yeah. The the one thing that's interesting is when you face some bosses, like I'm trying to remember the cupcake one or whatever. Mm -hmm. the, some of the the bosses or the the mini ones that come out of the the thing or whatever, like they they come in different orders sometimes. So like, oh, I didn't see this yet because I never got to fight this particular like. Um, I'm trying to remember what came out of the cupcake. There was this like really nasty uh, face like that spits things out. I'm not like, help me out here, someone who's played this. Uh, I haven't gotten that far. I've got to the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there's this candy guy, like, that he's spitting can gumballs out of his head, like, he's just so freaking awesome and random. Yeah, like, he's the guy whose failure statement says about chewing things up and spit them out. Oh, yeah. You realize, HTK, those are the things you parry, right? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the purple things, yeah. All the I, pink I, stuff. Yeah, all the pink yeah. stuff, sorry. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I discovered that late. I didn't get. <laughs> so I did not have that in this video. I tell you, man, I, I, this is where I'm stuck right now, and because I. Because another one, like when the tears fell on my head, it killed me. So I thought, like, yeah, maybe I should not touch him. <laughs> you know, there's an achievement for this for going through all of the um, running gun stages without killing anything. Yeah. Oh. That that seems I've, pretty hairy to me. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the Macus guides, and uh, it makes it look so easy. How in the world would you? Okay. Hey. A lot of dodging. That is well, a lot if you of got dodging. yourself, if you got yourself the, if you manage to get the five coins, and then you could purchase the, the the dodge that allows you to avoid damage while you're dodging, that man, that would ah. be easier. Uh, I, okay. Oh, so and that reminds me, Peter, you said you wanted to, you didn't know what to buy at first. I bought Correct. the, um, uh, uh, invisible dodge, so you turn invisible while you dash. Ah, uh, okay. That's a that's a good one. No. I went with the seeking shot. It's been okay so far. Because okay. then, you then you can just uh, set like I set my my paddle on my elite controller to um, shoot and just hold it and do the other other stuff and just you know constantly have right, okay. uh, focus on okay. dodging. I I may have to do that. A couple people have said they've done that. Um, I have to I have to try that. I'm not sure. I, I'm thinking that I that I almost want to put the special on the trigger. Because that really seems to be the one that I that I don't do a lot of uh, because I don't want to take my thumb off the X to move it over to the B. Right. So. But also that's why I moved the uh, after this video I moved the regular gunning to my left trigger, huh. which helps a little. Which helps. It helped me a lot. All right, I might have to try it. Yeah, I had a lot of that. Otherwise, you have to hold that button, and while you're jumping and stuff, and you have to push multiple buttons, and kind of ends up uh, there's a not always registering correctly. Have you guys gotten the super move yet? Whether you get actually temporary invulnerability? Nope. No. No. That, that'll probably help you get through that the levels of shooting people. It doesn't last long, but it's actually a super. I, I'm hoping not. I'm probably giving away some stuff, so I shouldn't get too proud of myself. But <laughs> well, it's a pretty cool. Comes in handy. Well, for, I bet. For someone who uh, who who um, is making your kids play it the pure way, uh, <laughs> what's your what's your thoughts on what's your thoughts on throwing the uh, throwing uh, shoot up on the trigger? Is that a uh, judge's judge's call? Oh, you mean like <laughs> playing with the controller? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. No, I I. Uh, you guys are cheating. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just uh, like hey, if it's if it's in a game, it's not cheating, right? <laughs> right, right. Hey, I paid I paid uh, well fifty. I had a Best Buy gift card, but so I paid fifty for my Elite uh, controller. So that's, that's I I bought the right to cheat with that. That's what that's a copy yeah. that copy that. I, get, I, get. I I also haven't don't have that controller, and believe me, when I get it. It's so okay, making some tweaks, at least for Ghost Recon. Who knows? It we'll doesn't see. feel like a piece of paper anymore. It actually feels like you paid for something. No, it's yeah. it's amazing. Uh, I love mine. Uh, I use it um, a lot for Forza because the, the default settings for Forza have the clutch and the brake on your bumper and trigger on the left side, and it's difficult to clutch and brake at the same time. But with the clutch on the paddle, I can clutch, downshift, and brake at the same time. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. And cheat, but, but hey, pretty uh, <laughs> not, hey, uh, you, you do what you got to do. If it's like I said, if you can, the fact that the the fact that the Xbox and is for you could actually remap your buttons at the system level, that's that tells yeah. me you you're not really cheating. So that's how you, I have to try. I have to try to put the shift to put the shooting on the trigger and see if it's any better. Well, yeah, but that's just in game. So that's you know the game is set up for that. What's funny is there was someone in the chat saying that they beat the game and they didn't tamper or not tamper. Excuse, excuse me. Sorry. That <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't change the controls. And I'm like, wow, they're so okay. They're actually taking pride in that. I'm like, I'm going to go down that road too, at least for now, because I don't have the elite controller or I know you can do it anyways in the system, but yeah. like well, you said, purist, right? So, right. That's right. So. Between Cuphead and, you know, running Forza with the, you know, the second highest AI oh. difficulty, no assists and all that. That's that's the other Dark Dark Souls, 
it's, it's the Dark Souls of racing. Fair enough. Because I hate that comparison as much as anybody, but I'm going to use Dark it every Souls time. Dark Souls of racing. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to say this is the Dark Souls of platformers, but no. I, I I died six or seven times just on the first level. I didn't make it out of the tutorial, but... <laughs> 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 that dude is never gonna live that down. Not yeah, that no, was just uh, I don't the have ducking, uh, the ducking part, right? Right, right. Shouldn't. The ducking part. <laughs> uh, what a good game this is! So I'm glad everybody's enjoying it, yeah. well, especially for twenty bucks. I mean, right? That's just that's yeah, kind it's, of a steal. It's yeah, it really, is. That, no doubt. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, all right. So um, I gotta ask Rick a question though. Yeah. We haven't r- talked on yet. Um, did you say you have a Switch? You have a Switch. That's what you're playing. Dun- uh, Dungeons, Dungeons on, yeah. Right. Breath of the Wild. I put in 125 plus hours. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the Switch. Did you mess with the Autopad demo? No. If you That's... like, uh, you you had said you weren't big on turn based, but if you if you if you don't hate the Final Fantasy like three or six kind of thing, like the old SNES thing, it it's. It's, uh, it gave me those kind of vibes, but I love the style on that too. I'm sure you saw the kind of unique, like two slash three D style on it. Yeah, and and then wasn't there just a demo, an RPG demo? What was that one that um, they they had on their Nintendo had on their um, their live stream or whatever? The uh, I, I didn't catch that stream. I was working. Well, there, there's a well. Then you should check it out. There's a new RPG that they you can play the demo. The game's not out yet, but it's. Turn based. It's uh, like an old school RPG. Absolutely fantastic. I love that Nintendo does these things. I just, I, I just like. I can't wait for Mario mm-hmm. uh, for next month. Uh, right? Isn't it October? Or wait a minute. No, it's October twenty something. Right? It's, it's, it's yeah. this month. October yeah. first. We just made his day. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as a second, because even in Mario, I found out in Mario. Um, uh, Odyssey or not? Wow! Did I just say? Wait, what's it called? Mario? What's the new Mario game called? Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey. you got it. It's Odyssey. Okay. Hey, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. <laughs> so, uh, I saw that there's going to be some of the the classic 2D elements in the game. I, I just I, I can't wait. I, I love that stuff. I, yeah. I, I can't believe that I've put in more hours in Quest for Dungeons in that darn game than like. All your AAA like blockbuster, like even Ghost Recon, because it's just addicting, and it's just it just goes to show you, even like with Cuphead, it, especially for the younger crowd. I don't care if that's judging or not. Listen, you don't need to have, um, you know, like a 4K AAA label, you know, hardcore exclusive IP. Even though this is exclusive, but it's not like completely 100% Xbox exclusive, like like. Ori, right? Is that right. fair to say? No, well, Ori went to Steam. Okay, copy that. Oh, that's true too. Well, anyways, the point being is like that these games, Cuphead, Quest for Dungeons, and so on and so forth, like the 2D style, or whatever, just the simple platform games. The fun factor that mm-hmm. is supreme over everything. And when you have a game that can put it all together, well, then you got G O T Y contenders. So. It's what do you think about Doom this coming was in that to conversation? Doom. I man, I have I, everyone here has played Doom? Yes. Yeah. Not on the Switch. The fact that it's yes. just coming to the Switch though. And there's motion controls, right? Isn't that I, that's what I understand. I haven't seen it demonstrated, but that's what I understand. Did did they say that though? I thought that there wasn't any kind of special Switch. No, out. I thought they had said that they were doing Switch <laughs> you know, related things with it. Hold on. I, I yeah, something could... unique. I could be wrong. Hold on, let me. While well, you got you, uh, please continue. Well, when I saw it, I, I just wanted to want another Switch owner's opinion on it was because, you know, I had said many times since I got the Switch, which I love, that the only thing wrong with the Switch is I couldn't play everything on the Switch, because using it is kind of a joy. It's kind of an awesome little piece of kit. Does not right? make use of Switch's motion control capabilities, according to Nintendo. Oh well, there you go. According I, to I, uh, I could... actually, according to. Uh, Bethesda, sorry. Well, with the when I saw it, you know, it, it gave me a dilemma because I would like to play it mobile too, but I already own a copy, and I think they want full price for it. And uh, with that, owning it and dumping money into a, an X, 
if I'm going to revisit, I'm probably going to go with the X version. I'm probably going to play it on the X and not buy it again, then buy it again for the Switch. So sure. I don't know if I need everything on the Switch, but I, I want more things that are Switch only. Not necessarily exclusive, but I mean designed around the Switch and its capabilities. What I loved is that when we had a really bad windstorm, it was really bad, and we lost power, and not only that, we were on well water, so we had no water, no nothing. And yet here we are with Breath of the Wild on the Switch, baby. On that, Because we, we had a little battery. We had about 75% battery left. So, guys, I said, we'll play it till it runs out. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, like, just the fact that you have an amazing, you know, game in Zelda playing it on that you know the the switch controller the switch pad or whatever it's just it's just phenomenal you know albeit uh, you know truth be told i do use the nintendo pro controller when i can um but to be able to take it on the go is is fantastic i, I love the switch i always be a nintendo fan and to me it's not all about all the gimmicky stuff like even with the wii wii u that's cool it's, it's still for me it's the games the connect was cool for the xbox was great, but it's like come on let's see the games that's what make a console to me. Forget all the flashy stuff. I want games. Nintendo's got the games. They do. Me. Yep, yep. All right. Well, since you brought up games, let me uh, switch gears here real quick. I want to show um, uh, real quick. We try to do this every month. I missed it last month because of our uh, uh, technical difficulties, but I try to grab the PS Plus and Xbox Games with gold for the upcoming month. And since we've just hit uh, October, uh, let's show them off real quick. Uh, we'll start with what is coming to Xbox with their games with gold. And take it away, Larry. Hey, Xbox fans, are you ready for the October Games with Gold lineup? As always, all four games are playable and acquirable on Xbox One and free to those with an active Xbox Live Gold subscription. First up, imagine coming home after a year abroad and none of your family is there to meet and greet you. Where is everyone? Unravel the mystery for yourself in Gone Home October 1st. Then exercise your mind as International Space Agency engineer Ava Turing on Jupiter's moon Europa. Can you uncover the truth as the story unfolds in this first-person puzzler? The Turing Test, available on October 16th. Yeah, it's on not the Xbox long. 360, and I got addicted 3 to it. HD and brings the joy and, and, and of 3D like, platforming in charming yeah. high definition. Starting on October 1st, hours. <laughs> jump, fly, and wow. fight your way through the army of hoodlums with a team of characters ready to help save the world. And then on October 16th, jump into World War II action with Medal of Honor uh, Airborne in this open environment yeah. first person shooter. Tell you. Call the shots from the second you jump out of your airplane yeah, by that's deciding a game where to land played, you know, and which so objective to complete. At some point with I customizable might, weapons that, and a uh, new AI engine, it's, it's the just battle nice having the will option. be furious. Yeah. To redeem the titles, simply click on the gold area Medal on your Xbox Honor, One, always. your Xbox 360, Solid or even Solid on the series. web at xbox.com forward Gone slash home. games with gold. Your new game Okay. Will automatically I, I, I appear a huge in the fan of it, but it was, section uh, of the it gets, it gets some hate. It, but um, I like uh, go uh, what remains of Edith Finch uh, better. Was Gone Home sort of? Um, I mean, was it a larger scale game? I mean, mm -hmm. how long? How many hours was it? No, it's it's a couple of hours. It's not. Hmm. You can you can burn through. I think someone went through it in like five minutes because. It's mostly narrative. It's mostly going here, reading things, and learning about what happened. And it's it, there's not really action to it or anything like that. It it tells a moderately interesting story. Um, it's kind of a different take. It's kind of one of those you know uh, some people use the, the term derogatively, but it's a, a walking simulator, if you will. There's not a lot to action in the game. But I didn't hate the story it told. It's not super long. I think Edith Finch did a little better because it was a little more fantastical in the storytelling and it felt more like um, you know, watching an old episode of like Amazing Tales and, and the broken down little pieces of, of different story. Um, I thought um, another good example of a good one in that genre was uh, uh, The Stanley Parable, if any of you ever played that. Did not. Mm. 
Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's I, I played that on Steam, and it's worth a look if you ever get a chance. It's it's again, it's not a lot of action, but it tells a story. But in this one, it does a lot of fourth wall breaking stuff, and it, it about how people play games and think about things when they're playing games. It does a lot of kind of messing with the player. It uh, yeah, the Stanley Parable is definitely worth a look. Which is not really the game's goal at all, but that gone gone home took me there. All right. Anybody play Touring Test? Yes. And liked it. Okay. Easy yeah, enough. it's it's a solid solid little puzzler. Uh, if you if you get all the lore full pieces, you pick it up. It actually tells a, I think a more interesting story than Gone Home. Um, but I don't want to spoil any of it. So. Cool. Now, uh, Rayman 3, um, that's in the Rayman series. And, um, uh, and I played that a long time ago. But um, definitely right up there as far as um, you know the quality of the Rayman games. And if you played Origins or played Legends and you're, you're, looking, for, uh, you're looking for the next one to go through, yeah, Rayman 3 is a fantastic game. I'm glad that one's coming back. And I might... I might try to run through that one again myself and medal of honor airborne the medal of honor series honestly has 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 stood the test of time and you know we talk about battlefield and we talk about um uh you know call of duty and those are your two big ones but you know ea had a pretty pretty solid series with medal of honor and the storytelling and that was really really nice so um yeah decent a, a decent slate of games this year any anybody else play any of these four no i mean i like i said i played rayman legends kids that's another one we like i'm not very good at it but we do like the legends one um no the turning test actually looks interesting uh, i didn't i mean you know i see some of these arcade games i'm like okay i've never really tried them but that looks interesting so but other than that, I played one Medal of Honor, um, but these four specifically I have not. So that's a good month for you then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just add to my backlog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tab. And then, of course, here are the PlayStation games of this year. So take it away, PlayStation guy. I don't remember who is. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a good one to give away this month. Yeah, I think uh, if you're if you're you know putting them on a scale, this one weighs a little heavier this month. Yeah. Amnesia, I didn't play. I I tried that one. I I gave up on it though. I was I kept waiting for something to happen, and nothing to me was happening that I was thought might happen, so I stopped. Yeah, it's it tries to be psychological and you know you got to you got to you got to go all the way with those. Um otherwise if you just if you're not if you're not freaked out, the game doesn't lose the game doesn't give you anything. And I can think of a couple of games that that were like that, one of which was I guess you'd call it a AAA game it was made by Sega. Uh, came out at the beginning of the Xbox 360, and that was Condemned, uh, mm. which was. Yeah. They should put that in BC. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, games for gold. They they should, cause that's a that's a crazy yeah. crazy game. Um, it is. Is it backward compatible? I'm pretty sure it is. Which one? Condemned. Was. Condemned. Condemned. I thought I saw that. Hang that, on, that, I'm checking. That it. rings familiar. I'm pretty sure it is. But um, yeah, condemned. And the, the full name of the game is um, Condemned Criminal Origins. Yes. The other one that was really good, and it 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 freaked me out sometimes. Not all not all the way through, but the ending of that game, uh, the ending of this game was. Um, by the time I got there, I'm like, ah, let it let it's it's gonna be what I think it is, and then it was. And I'm like, and I was still like, damn, I can't believe it. Um, was called White Knight. Oh yeah, it was a. It's an indie game. Um, and I tell you, it, it the art style, the 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 
the story without a st- – well, no, there was a story. It kind of told itself through through the game, um, kind of through – almost in a sixth sense kind of way, but but in a third-person sixth sense kind of way. And by, like I said, by the time I got to the end, I was like, damn. Even though I knew what was coming, I was like, damn, anyway. So it, 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 I'm with you. You got you to gotta be able to hit that. And if you don't, eh. But Phantom Pain, man, that that's a great game to give away. You know what game does what yeah. you're talking about is Resident the new Resident Evil, the most recent Resident Evil. That game doesn't, you know, do the whole like spin you up and then nothing really happens thing. Like ten minutes of that game, you lose a hand. <laughs> it's it's a you good know, one. I, I don't know about you guys, but I I was a really big, huge, huge, huge fan. I remember when I played it on the PC, Resident Evil. The very first one. And Resident Evil 2 is great. Resident Evil 3 is great. That's uh, where it ended for me, basically. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll be honest with you. Resident Evil 4 took a turn, but I still really liked Resident Evil 4. Um, I've heard that a lot. Action, you know, but they still had the survival horror. They still had the very intense moments. And there was times I paused the game and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is so dark. <laughs> and this is crazy. But I just kept, you know, I, I really enjoyed it a lot. And then Resident Evil 5 hits. I'm like, screw you guys. Resident Evil 6 hits. I'm like, you know what? You're all dead to me. <laughs> and then Resident Evil 7, they're still dead to me because I, I, I still don't want to give it a try. Like, I, I tried to... I try to watch a little bit of pe- pe- people playing, and no matter how people tell me how good they think the game is, it will never be Resident Evil 7 to me, or Resident Evil to me, because it's not third person. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that's right, but it'll never have that Resident Evil. The only game I really respect now for the Resident Evil, if you will, is um the same guy who made the, the first few. Do you think of um, The Evil Within? The Evil Within. I love The Evil Within. If you haven't played that, that is Resident Evil to me. And I cannot wait for the second one. But you know what, Resident Evil 7? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so mad at since Resident Evil 5. I just can't. I don't know. You guys tell me if I'm dead wrong because I need someone to tell me. You're dead wrong, Rick. you got to get Resident Evil 7. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know. But 5 was the first Resident Evil I played. So oh my actually, goodness. I played it, played it twice. So I don't have the full history. I have the whole package now. But... Uh, Nate and I, we've been playing five in co-op, and, and we started six. <laughs> I'm not quite done yet, I believe, right? Are we done or not? It's six. I, oh, were you guys done? Sorry. Yes, the video Nate? was done. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Nate, did we finish six? I we can't he hear you. Muted. You're, you're muted. You may be muted. Yeah, I muted my mom was doing <laughs> the laundry. My bad. Oh, okay. right. No, I just said uh, we were karate chopping people's head off. <laughs> yeah, and that's some uh, that's some fun moments. But but once again, you know, the, in co-op, you know, it might be uh, a different story in the sense of it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of hilarious moments. By the way, just a pro tip: something you don't want to, something you don't want to advertise on a podcast is I had to mute the mic because my mom's doing the laundry. Oh well, you know, just saying. Unless she plans on coming on and making an appearance on the podcast. Well, that'd she be, probably would have. She says, I got to have a mom session every time. Like, every week we have a mom session. And I was like, okay, I'll, 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 let, it, I'll let them know, see what they say. Mom's it depends. tip of the week. If but I still have to, going back to Resident Evil, I still have to play uh, 7 in uh, using PSVR. So. Yes, that should be your Halloween game. Like, just to have My Halloween series. game? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you may be honest on there. I hear it's pretty killer on the VR. I, I, I hadn't played a Resident Evil since the third. I love the first two, the, the th- Third was was the third? No, three was the one with Leon. No, anyway, uh, but seven, uh, you're right. It's not the same first person. I would I would prefer it to be third person, but it does capture the concept of the house and the puzzles and the things like that. Pretty cool. It does in the the inventory management. It, it's it's it feels like the first one. Even down, kind of when you're doing the shooting, it's almost like those same tank kind of controls. Kind of when you're when doing the shooting, okay. so. Yeah, I mean, it's better. It was better than I thought it was gonna be, and and the big thing is because uh, you know, with a, a, there was a decent game, it was a decent kind of psychological scary thing called uh, Layers of Fear, that was that hit a bunch of platforms. That was on Game of Gold. I, I played it that way. Um, played a couple of those kinds of games in the last. Couple I like years, Layers of Fear. Yeah, they're they're decent, but they don't 
like 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 um, Rick was saying about uh, amnesia, they don't really follow through on the. That's true. On the scary and and Resident Evil Seven definitely does. It, it's mm. it, it it follows through in a, in a good way. Puts it, in your yeah, because I I know there was a few jump scares for me on Layers of Fear, but that's just because that I did the wrong thing just to see what would happen. Right. <laughs> like, don't turn around. Oh, obviously, I'm going to turn around. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was it was okay. It wasn't bad for what it was, but like it, like like I said, and Rick saying that it it sounds the same if you don't bring it home. Yeah. Like uh, you, like the game you mentioned, Evil Within. If you mess up in that game, it brings it home. <laughs> it lets you know. <laughs> I think the second one's coming out this month, isn't it? I think so. I haven't followed the date on it. I've been, uh, between my X Fund and Forza being uh, the the hundred dollar edition and all that, uh, you know, and and Mario coming. I, I, it hasn't. Oh, it oh hasn't my goodness! This played. is a great month for games. Yeah, Evil yeah. Within, Mario. There's a few other good ones I can't think of. Uh, Assassin's Creed is this month, or is it next? I think that's next. I think uh, it's the end of this month. I'm pretty sure it's the end of this month. It's either that or just very early November. Yeah, I don't. It might be very early I, Well, Call of Duty is very early November. Well, they released it the same exact... Because November 3rd, uh, I think, is Call of Duty. Let's see, let's see right in here. October 27th is Assassin's Creed. Okay. Oh! Wow. So, yeah. It's a so dilemma, don't, though. Shoot like up a lot of people right then and wait for the X. X. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I... That's one where I pick up Mario on the Switch and wait for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm getting... Yeah. Good call. Mario's going to be the game of the year. He's gonna, Mario's going to wrap up... Just He's going to consume Game of the Year awards. It's just going to be like Pac-Man. Nom, 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 nom. On the, on the <laughs> we also have Wolfenstein, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. yep. Ooh, man. It's like, like, I have to play. actually make time to play that. Which is on... Right, because it's on pre-order. <laughs> well, so that's a good one. Is that a... <laughs> Is that a one I play now, or is it one I wait? I, I think I gotta wait. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because sure. then you could tell us about the 1080p compared to a 4K thing. Like, everyone who... We're not gonna know until we see it, and then I trust you guys, so I look forward to hearing what you guys think about it. I won't know right off. It's, I'm getting my X before I get the TV, because I have no reason to have a 4K TV. No, that's what I mean. Like, you guys... I have 4K TV, but you guys don't. So I'm looking forward to hearing about what you guys think it does. Still Man, without it. Coop brings up Shadow Wars this month too. All oh, right, too many games, too many games. And that yeah, I still have to play the. Still have to play the first one. It's so good. If you ask, you should I, definitely I stopped play the only because I felt like it was over and over and over and over again. Like like I'm, I'm I'm getting to a point to where I'm having trouble with grindy games. Oh, <laughs> the Destiny is major grindy game, but. It's but, different when you're playing with people, though. Like, we're yeah, grinding together. So. Yeah. So, and we can do stupid stuff just to do stupid stuff. True. <laughs> now, who's played the other, uh, not Shadows of War, but... Um, Mordor. Shadows of Mordor, yeah. Awesome. I haven't played it yet. I have I it played on my library, but... It's so okay. good. Digitally so, strength wraps. Still. You know, yeah, when I was at Gamescom, one of the cool things is uh, when I actually did get a chance to go... So we did three days of press, and then we were on the... We had a public booth... In, in a big way at Gamescom. And, well, we had a lot of guys working there, so I was able to get away sometimes. And one of the times I snuck away. And I, I went, and it was, it was like a two and a half hour wait to play Shadows of uh, War. <laughs> and, but, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to use my War Horse privilege thing here. And, <laughs> and I go up to the side, and I see this guy on staff. And I'm like, hey, man. I'm like, because actually we had, um, there was, we had knights there. That actually fought some of the, the the creatures in Shadows of War, some of the orcs. Nice. Oh, it, it was really pretty cool. But then, like, there was like some PR things, I guess, that happened that was kind of like uh, maybe we shouldn't do this, so people wouldn't think there's like orcs in Kingdom Come or not. That wasn't related. It was more so like our us like knights in Shadows of War, or whatever. Anyway. I'm like, hey, man. I was like, yeah, you know, PC game of the show, right, right, yeah, yeah. So, like, hey. No, I, was, I said, you know, we're, I work with Lars. You know what it is. It's hard to kind of get away. Uh, is there any way I can, you know, check out the game? And one of the, oh, man, uh, what was his name? Such a cool guy. And I, I think he was not one of the producers. But no, he was, I think he was one of the producers. And he came over and he talked to me because I talked to this other guy to talk to him. He's like, hey, I'll tell you what. Come tomorrow morning and we'll let you in. So, the next nice. day... 
I was running a little late because I helped out at our booth and do some things. He got us right in, and he was like standing next to me, man, as I'm playing. And I'm mm. telling you something, playing Shadows of War, it's not like it's a whole different game, but it takes it to a whole new level because it, it is an all-out flipping war. In your face, like there's such more variety with these orcs, and there's these big badass guys, and I'm like, oh my goodness, and I keep dying, and like I keep going back in. And just, uh, you're giving me goosebumps this. right now. I can't wait for this. <laughs> it, it it is absolutely where Shadows of War is is a is a phenomenal sequel in its own right, and I know I barely played it, but there's some games where you play it and you're like, you know, what? I don't even want to play anymore. I I can't. I don't don't even talk to me about the game. <laughs> I just want to play. The full version, Shadows of War, this month. <laughs> When uh, this is brought to you by, yeah, uh, Best Buy gives you the ring, the one ring to roll uh, on. <laughs> when they had the the demo or the the gameplay footage for E3 this year, and they had uh, Bruce the Chopper. Man, I loved Bruce the Chopper, <laughs> the big orc. Oh yeah, big sassy orc. Yeah, fantastic. That that made me want to play the game right there. Controlling your army and the things you're going to be able to do in Shadows of War, there's a lot more strategy involved. You're going to have to do a lot, put the thinking cap on because there's a lot of stuff you got to do in this one. Excuse me, it's just and the, the game looks absolutely gorgeous, fantastic, and it's and it's more challenging. There's definitely more of a challenge to it for those who like the Dark Souls types, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the Dark Souls of uh, Middle Earth war games. <laughs> 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 What is the Dark Souls of Dark Souls games? Uh, Ooh. Probably <laughs> Bloodborne. <laughs> no, I it, it's Neo, right? A D- a Demon Souls, oh, maybe. I never played Demon Souls. I know you maybe. have. I wish I would have. Bloodborne was tough. They all were, but. And the last Dark Souls seemed a little more difficult than the second one. Um. That's a tough call. Maybe Bloodborne. Maybe. All right. Cool. All right. Um, Ten thirty-three. We're we're doing pretty good here. We're gonna move into. I, I had gotten it. Um, if you guys are any bit interested in in discussing it before we uh, get to Wands Retro Rec, I did. Um, any off chance anybody cares? I mean, it's a big, you know, it is the big game coming out. Cup Souls. Huh? Sorry, I just read the comments. It's Cup Souls. Cup yeah, Souls. Hey, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hang on. Mixer, where is it? I'm running out of, uh, there we go. I'm running out of um, things down at the X Split. So, of course. Ah, yeah. That trailer happened. I mean, still hadn't seen it with sound yet. Oh, well, here you go. It's not a long one, so. Sorry for the choppiness on it, though. For some reason, when the video plays, your voice. You got some money for really, me, boy. Like, don't bother. I seen your name in our legend. <laughs> You're a wanted man, <laughs> Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father, I'll keep her in black on your behalf. We got lawmen in three different states. It's the Dark Souls of Train Ice Game. Chase the <laughs> Dark Souls of Wild West. Right. This place. Uh, ain't no such the West thing. World of Dark Souls game. It's civilized. <laughs> That's coming back pretty soon too, isn't it? What? You're the only West one World? of these fools that I trust. Am I the only one who watches it? I haven't watched it. Watch it. You watch it. Yeah, you watch it. Yeah. Okay, I think it's him. I could be wrong. Always, Dutch. <laughs> Product not yet. It'll be huge. Still you just says spring, it. though. They haven't, they haven't quite locked it down yet. Still just well. says spring. Not much sense in doing so at this point. Yeah, but we're in October. Spring's not terribly far away. Yeah. And no one wants to go up against February 18th. Yeah. Oh, gosh. February. I'm going to have back-to-back week in February. I have Kingdom Come, and then I'm also already bought Far Cry 5. Back-to-back weeks. Yeah. 
But the important one is Kingdom, Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come. Obviously. Kingdom Come for 13 Valentine's. That's what's going to happen, you know. I'm going to get, like, addicted to that, and then Far Cry will come, and I just will put it in my shelf. We'll, we'll definitely, like, I mean, if I may, it'd be fun to have an episode where we talk about all the different stories. Once I know it's just because we brought it up. But there's going to be, yeah. a, you know, all the different stories. There's going to be a lot of comical things that happen in the game where, you know, there'll be different twists and turns. I, I, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait. So, yeah. Well, I yeah, I'm on board. It sounds, we're all going to have a different experience. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be cool, though. Absolutely. Yeah, this is cool. gonna be, that's going to be a fun. We are going to, well, you're going to be way, way, way too busy that week. But subsequent weeks, it's one subsequent <laughs> week. Right after launch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then, it, it will be busy, but I'll be back. Definitely. Well, hopefully before that, but you know, sometime sure. around launch, I want to have you back on so that we can discuss this game because I'd, it seems like all four of us are getting it. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Oh, yeah. So yeah. To, to be able to give Once. four different versions of the game, that's going to be a fun day. Yeah, so. and once GameStop says, hey, you can pre-order it, I'll do that. Nice. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, and, we, and, we're, all, and, we're, all, and we're all buying it. Love it. Love it. We are going to support you that way. Glad to hear that, guys. Glad to hear that. So. I'll be like, oh, I know the guy. Can I get a t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, I think I think a little swag might be nice. Like, like I wouldn't mind, like you know, or a poster or something we could put on the wall because now my walls are bare, so I got stuff to put up. That would be awesome. I would, I would put up, I would put up a Kingdom Come poster if one came this way. Oh my goodness! You know, it'd be cool. I don't know where y'all live, but I, I, I'd love to somehow meet up. Then I could really hook you up. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Let's see. Is that a, is that a threat? <laughs> <laughs> Interpretation, you know. Well, right. Let's see. I'm in I'm Maryland. Ohio. Peter's in Virginia. Oh, that's not far. I'm in New York. Uh, upstate yeah. New York isn't too far. No, well, oh, it yeah. depends where upstate. Uh, I'm closer to Buffalo, Hamlin, which is well Rochester, really. Um, what like an eight-hour drive? I, I don't mind. Like driving for me yeah. is nothing because I used to do a lot of it. So you should take the Acela down. <laughs> at least halfway. Yeah. Let the meet him at Great Wolf. Great Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> right. So all right. Well, we'll you know because the other thing too is I know um, I don't think we're I don't think I'm going to make New York Comic Con this year, but. If if companies start heading to Comic Con over here, because they all love to go to San Diego Comic Con, I know no sure. one gives, but no one seems to care anything about the East Coast. I don't know why, it's except for PAX. TV shows. PAX is the only thing up here. True. And you know, I'm never going to the Coleco Expo again, so I can't meet you there. <laughs> so uh, why not? <laughs> I don't know if he saw that episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that was that was horrible. Uh, but um. I don't know. It's Pax, I would I, I would like to get to Pax. I'm trying to I'm trying to think whether or not we could actually get into Pax without having without having to to wait in line. Because if we try to wait for tickets, that may be the one time when I try to pretend we're press is to get into <laughs> Pax because <laughs> I, I, you, you can go on their site and like within an hour of tickets being available it's sold out pax would be it's a great place to meet i would do pax and i'd take the kid with me well he loved the other one so he did which means he'd go crazy for pax yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you may need to have he, he managed person. to have more fun <laughs> at a boring ass expo than i did <laughs> so, so you know what? where's everybody from then so where's i'm in maryland person? Yeah, I'm in Virginia. I'm Southeast Michigan. Yeah, Cincinnati, Ohio. Virginia. Oh, man, you guys aren't, like, too, too far. Even no, I look at Rochester. only, like, seven-hour drive. Yeah, that's not much. I've been to Cincy a couple times. Michigander. The uh, problem for me, at least in the next month, is I'm looking at having four entire days off in the next month. Awesome. I love yeah, your it's job. It's fantastic. Man. Your job is the best. <laughs> yeah, we love your job so much. Your job. Is yeah, awesome. tomorrow, tomorrow we get a new billing system, so that'll be sweet. 
and uh, big billing conversions always go very smoothly every time without any kind of hitches or problems, so it's going to be amazing. Um, simultaneously, in this, like the second day of that going on, we're, start, we're going to have our, our sun outages. Sun outages are awesome. I don't know if you know, I work for a, um, uh, a cable provider, ISP TV, and uh, work on the phones for that. And so uh, sun outages happen in the spring and the fall because of the way satellites work and their alignment between the Earth and the sun gets to be just wrong and it fouls up the signal for, it's kind of like a rolling blackout through your channel list. Hmm. And uh, it, a channel will be down for five, six minutes or whatever and then come back. Generates endless amounts of calls throughout the day. And this will be, of course, at the same time we're having our new billing system, so... There's no day I off. think you should make a weekly yeah, well, um, podcast about what you go through, and I would watch that. Yeah. <laughs> the adventures of Juan. Yeah, my is, it, it then gets out, and yeah. then I'm not going through it anymore. <laughs> 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 well, that what we would it. do is we would put a we would put a Patreon. Darth Vader mask over you, yeah. and we would have it would have the uh, the voice changer. Yeah. That's okay. No, it's. I. I, it's, I, I, I I got this going on. Um, one of our internet connections at our office is uh, down. It gets it actually gets um, uh, supplied to us from a data center, and the telecommunications vendor uh, has informed the data center they've been unable to obtain the necessary equipment to perform fiber cleaning, and so uh, they can't fix their problem. Hmm. Uh, kind of like, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Did you send him a rag? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> spray a little WD forty on it. It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you don't have a compressor, right? <laughs> Air in a can. Get a compressed air. <laughs> <laughs> that fixes everything. Yeah. You ever uh, see the engineer's flowchart. What? Have you ever, have you ever seen the engineer's flowchart? Yes, it's I've like seen, well, I've seen. Does it, it does it move? Is it supposed to? And it's like duct tape and WD forty. Right. That's I've your answers. Uh, all right, we are at ten forty three, and that means it's two bells, guys, and it's time for. I'm sorry, it's a Captain Chesapeake joke. You guys aren't <laughs> from Maryland. No. It's you two bells, me. and it's time for Scooby Doo. Captain Chesapeake was like Captain. He was like a Captain Kangaroo type thing. He was just a guy in between the uh, cartoons that was gotcha. on an old rickety boat in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay um, with uh, uh, a sea monster uh, puppet. And, um, yeah, it was it that's, was cheap as all get out. But That's it, one of those B-more things? Yes, it was a B-more thing. It was like like spider rags? Thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. Captain Chesapeake. It was great. Anyway, Uh so he used to he used to ring his bell. It's two bells. It's time for Scooby Doo, and we'd all run to the couch. Nice. All right, here we go. It's Watts time. Oh yeah. I haven't updated this yet, but I will. Good old Steel Battalion. Yep. Waiting for that series. Yeah, it's on the list. I still have to finish his Mortal Kombat series first. I've, I've been neglecting that. Not on purpose, but it happens. Oh, I needed to get your Forza and other stuff up first. Right. All right. Today's special. Come along. Yes, everybody. today with the retro recognition, we have a treat, a special. We're going back to the uh, to 2002 and the Xbox cult hit Jet Set Radio Future. You can go ahead and kick it off when you're ready. It's kicked. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, again, February 2002 is released on the original Xbox sequel to Jet Set Radio on the Sega Dreamcast. It was uh, developed. Uh, by Smilebit, 
which was uh, a subsidiary of Sega. It was uh, one of the six teams that they broke their R&D down into, and that's how you got teams like AM2 and Sonic Team, and this is kind of like cousins to them. Uh, they made games for the Dreamcast, for Xbox, PS2, the Game Boy Advance, and PC. Uh, the Xbox, they were mostly known for this, uh, Gun Valkyrie and Panza, uh, Panzer, excuse me, Dragoon Orta. Uh, they were consolidated in 2003, I think it was, uh, with the rest of the groups back into Sega Sports R&D. It was published by Sega, uh, founded in June 1960, originally as Service Games, so S-E-G-A, uh, officially styled as Sega. They have countless well-loved franchises, so I didn't really think to list them here. Uh, they developed consoles from 1938 to 2001, but after Dreamcast losses restructured to third-party software development. Uh, they're still the world's most pro prolific arcade producer, though. Over 500 games in 70 franchises on 20 different arcade system boards since 81, which is pretty crazy. Uh, this game uh, is, like I said, a kind of a cult classic on Xbox. Uh, it's a single-player and multiplayer action sports game of sorts, although sports doesn't really tie much into it, but it's the, action, the sport of rollerblading, um, trick rollerblading. Uh, it was a follow-on to Jet Set Radio from the Dreamcast. Uh, the player controls skaters in a uh, group called a group of skaters called a Rudy's. Rudy's were the groups, and it's a, basically a gang of skaters who are resisting oppression in Tokyo. Uh, the uh, Rokaku group was a big, big uh, multi-millionaire a big multi-million corporation basically purchased their own police force and uh, a guy made himself mayor of Tokyo and his corrupt police forces and uh, oppressing people's free speech and such and they're combating this through graffiti and <laughs> uh, underground radio which is where the jet set radio comes from uh, the player uh, can skate grind we saw a little bit of grinding going on there uh, rail grinding uh, even vertically up and down poles, um, wall riding, uh, mid-air tricks, and boosting. And the gameplay uh, kind of feels like what would have inspired uh, Sunset Overdrive. With the, you, get, you get the kind of, uh, you know, mobility is, uh, and traversal is, is kind of the, the bit, although it, does, it has yeah, aged a little bit by comparison to Sunset. Uh, the player uh, searches for opposing gangs graffiti and sprays over their graffiti with their own uh, when you clutch spray cans. Uh, hidden graffiti souls can be found, which unlock new graffiti tags, and uh, you can find tapes, which unlock additional miss missions. Objectives include racing rival skaters or uh, doing mimic battles, where you'll watch them perform tricks, and you have to perform those same tricks. And uh, participating in the battles and the races is how you compete with the other gangs and advance the story. Uh, it was one of the kind of the earlier uh, cell shaded games when that uh, became a thing on consoles, uh, along with uh, Cell Damage back in the day on the uh, OG Xbox. And I just ate a bus there, you can do that. And, <laughs> and get healed up afterwards. But, but yeah, uh, this is um, a representation of a, the kind of a fictionalized representation of an area in Japan. And uh, just picked up a graffiti soul there, so I got some new tags to work with. But uh, along with uh, battling the rival gangs for the turf, uh, it's about uh, resisting the uh, Rokaku police when they show up, and we'll, we'll see some of that in this video. Uh, the game was... Uh, one of the things that made the game kind of a, again, cult hit was uh, the uh, soundtrack, actually. It was, uh, was pretty impressive. Uh, the Jet Set Radio composers Hideki Naganuma, I'm so bad with names, and Richard Jacques returned with several tracks, and they were joined by several unusual artists not commonly heard in music culture of its time. Uh, Guitar Vader, uh, BS2000, which was a side product of Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys, uh, and Scapegoat Wax, which is one that I kind of picked up on from this game. Hadn't heard of them before, but I like them. Uh, the Latch Brothers, who include uh, another Beastie Boy, Mike D, and uh, Sibo Mato with the <laughs> divisive Birthday Cake song. And uh, it's not in this video, but if you've never heard it, you should probably look it up uh, because it's kind of a hallmark in, in gaming music. It's either you love it or hate it, but everyone has an opinion on it. It's, it's uh, very unique. Uh, I personally love the soundtrack myself, uh, particularly the, the uh, title theme, Concept of Love. There's another one, Like It Like This, Like That, 
And Isle 10, from the previous mentioned, Scapegoat Wax, is one that's actually on like my everyday playlist. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's really real quality. Uh, it was received pretty well. Uh, the review aggregator Medi- Metacritic has it as uh, reviewed favorably with a score of 88. Uh, IGN called it one of the coolest titles around, but not too challenging. Gave it a, a 9.1 of 10. GameSpot disagreed. They described it as one of the better Xbox games to date, offering a serious challenge at uh, 7, 8 of 10. I'm sorry, 8, 7 of 10. Uh, but, you know, in spite of uh, being reviewed pretty well and high scores, it didn't really sell very well. And so that uh, had Xbox official magazine uh, UK uh, give it the most unfairly ignored game of that year and give it a 9.2. Uh, again, it's uh, in that way, it's kind of similar again to Sunset Overdrive, which reviewed pretty well, but really didn't translate that much into, you know, commercial success. And I would agree that was an unfairly ignored game. So more parallels. Uh, Edge ranked it uh, 44 on its best 100 games to play today, and that's in 2009. That's a, a kind of a retrospective look at it there. It's uh, readily available online. You can get it uh, online pretty easy or in uh, secondhand shops. This The copy I'm playing here is my, my pack-in copy from when I got my original Xbox back in, I think it was 03 when I picked it up. Um, you can find the standalone game on disc, for between thirty and fifteen, thirty dollars in that range, uh, it's a little bit less expensive if you, if you pick up the pack-in disc that came with Sega GT on that particular Xbox bundle, which uh, Sega GT 2000, I think it was, or 2002, which was a, a real solid racer too. So that that'd probably be the way I'd recommend to go. Here in the in the scene, we've completed a race with one of the game members, and the Rokaku police have shown up, and uh, the way that you deal with them is you kind of shoulder tackle them as you're skating and hit them with um, some graffiti, and that uh, neutralizes them. Uh, you paint on their pretty white uniforms, and that allows you to uh, incapacitate them and move on to the next area. Uh, I really like the game. I uh, played through it. Uh, it was the first game I played through on the system with that pack-in disc, and uh, it's got a pretty strong following online. There's a lot of people calling for, uh, for a remaster of it. In fact, the, the, the composer <laughs> of the soundtrack has had has, has several memes out where he's like, I'm not Sega, I can't do this, please ask Sega. Um, all, in good, all in good fun. Uh, he's, he's a good sport about it. But I, w- I would personally like to see this uh, brought back. Um, yeah, like I said, I think uh, the style is different. Um, it's, it's one I really enjoyed. So that is one of the reasons it is this week's retro recommendation. Very nice. Thanks, um, You know, you have to... Uh... You have to start to start adding the uh, when we have them the the um, uh, the NLG scores. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's I, it's not. I never thought to put it on my kind of checklist for where I get the the little notes I, I write up for it. But uh, yeah, definitely that's something I can do. So let's see if we can show it here. This is uh way back in two thousand and three. Uh, Chris Wilson, and we gave it an 83. That sounds about right. Yeah, it was a good, good, solid game. Um, you know, excellent job of uh, of remaking it uh, from the uh, from the Dreamcast version. So um, it's a hard. Uh, I usually have this on a, another page, but I'm not using the page anymore. So, but uh, this is the old webarchive.org. Mm-hmm. Did. So, yeah. Um, we liked it too back then. Yeah, it was it was different. It was fresh. Uh, the, and the soundtrack was like nothing that I'd played. I hadn't had a Dreamcast, so it was my first exposure to it. Um and and I'm with the I'm with the fans. I would love to see this uh on OGBC when that hits on the Xbox when they when they bring about the old OG games. I would I would rock that. A remaster would be fine. Uh, a sequel would be better. You know, so um, yeah. If Sega happens to be listening through some miracle, uh, do that. Well, I, and, I deem it so. And I think the, um, I think it plays better with an Xbox controller than a Dreamcast controller, thanks to the dual sticks. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one thing that was always kind of tough was um, figuring out how to how to navigate with one stick. Now back then we had known you better, but. Um, 
you know, the, the Xbox controller definitely makes this experience better. So, um, when it becomes backward compatible, I'll probably go through it again, too. I pull it out for the Dreamcast once in a while, because the soundtrack is great, and the graphics are great, and um, it's it's a little tough. It doesn't hold up as well now as it did then, but Jet Set Radio Future definitely does. Yeah, I'm a big fan. And it was uh, Xbox's week in rotation. I hadn't done that one yet. I definitely wanted to put that in the series, because uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's another one of those games where... Uh, it's back when Xbox really had that Japanese support. Yeah. Because cause the Dreamcast had, had folded at that point, and Sega largely came to Xbox with uh, Shenmue and uh, you know the, uh, the racing games and, and this. and uh, So yeah, it's, uh, I, I'd love to see that kind of uh, Japanese support return to the Xbox. Nice work. Good job. Appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. Juan. Yeah. All right. Um... Oops. Wow. Okay. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> this happens every once in a while. Uh, I could just get No, Rick just, just has to read it out for us. Yeah, he just yeah. Well, I when I try this. So, still playing with uh, a couple things. I I'm, I'm still working on things like in, you know, the, there's a little bit of a uh frame rate dip in the podcast simply because there's Your camera work though. My camera's working, yeah. Baby steps, man. Baby steps. Baby steps. I'm getting there. So, um, anybody have any other great news to share? Anything going on that they uh, they want to talk about real quick? The floor is open, gentlemen. Rick? Well, I mean, Game Come Deliverance Valentine's Day, baby. <laughs> yeah. I set yeah, it up. I'm the rose. Down. That way, at least my wife thinks that I bought her a rose. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just yeah. send her box of chocolates and say, "Oh, look, Kingdom Come Deliverance. How did it get there?" Let's... Oh, yeah. yeah. What's this taped underneath of it? Well, it's well. If you're not gonna play it, sweetheart, I got it. I'll play it for us both. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just tell it's an inactive movie. It's a movie. It's movie night. It's movie night, mm-hmm. right? Well, why are you using the controller? <laughs> well, you know, choose yeah. your own adventure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Honey, the kids need a history lesson. This is going to help with their school somehow. You know, <laughs> let's play it. See what happens. Oh, it's a video game. Yeah. It's all oh. help with school. That is fantastic. This is educational, honey. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> all right. Uh, other gentlemen, anything else? Well, when Motorsport 7 launches, I'm considering I'd have to look at the schedules again and see when I'd be able to do it. But I'd like to do an NLG private lobby night where we can mm. set up some racing without being in the, in the you know wilds of the of the random hopper um, challenges because you get the backwards racing you get the yeah, you know yeah. people who can't stand being passed but I'd like to have a, a gentleman's race I'd like to have some some of our followers and fan uh, friends uh, you know show up and we can we can do it upright we can do a little qualifying because that's something they've added they've added qualifying to uh, you know, private races now, so you do a little qualifying run. Oh, Everybody nice. gets a nice little order. Uh-huh. Uh, have a little, have a little friendly, fun racing. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. So I'll, I'll take a look at the schedule and see when I can do that. We'll, we'll get information out via the, the Twitter account and such. But, uh, but yeah, I want to put together. A, you know, uh, basically, it's, we'll just do. Um, it might even we could even do like a, a point series if I'm feeling super froggy. Get ourselves a, an NLG champion or something. But, uh, but at least I'd like to start with a race night. Something like um, the way the way the way we did this when we did uh, a private when I was doing private lobbies with uh, people that I raced automobiles in life with was we would uh, set up uh, we'd meet up and pick a track or have a track picked out uh, do some practice runs for like ten minutes just some lap, laps just for everyone to get a feel for the for the track we'd probably do spec I'd probably set a spec so the cars mm-hmm. are, are are evenly matched or at least one of the we could try out the new homologation features. Um, but then you do like a qualifying and you just determine how many laps a half hour would be. And you do a half hour race and just call that the night. And it's a pretty fun way to go about it. Okay. Well, and we'll, you know, um, we'll figure out how to advertise that to once we're ready to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I, I don't, I don't want, you know, like a 24 
pat I'd like a I'd like a nice like ten twelve I think would would do for a night and if we can pull that I'd be really happy. Okay, we'll figure out how to make that work. All right, um, I'll get the town votes ready. I'll okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, a real quick want to thank the chat room. Chat room is great as always, and our our good friends are. In there, I love the fact that we do have such a uh, international chat room, uh, mm-hmm. from here all the way across to Australia and back, and in between, and it's great. Um, it's awesome. and, you know, these guys, these these guys are our rocks, and uh, without uh, without them, you know, we're, we can go. We're just talking to ourselves. So, right. and of course, uh, to our friend Rick from War from War Horse Studios, who was so kind to come back and join us again. Yep. Thank you, brother. And Thank um, you. Yeah, man, love I love hearing your stories. I always have one interesting story or another to tell, so So that's that's great. By the way, what is that is that are those uh are those little girl toys behind you? Oh yeah. Uh, my mother in law she bought like all this stuff for us. It's scary. Okay. Wow. All these <laughs> collectibles. I think some of these things can sell for like four or five hundred dollars online on eBay or something. Uh, Damn. These, like I'm not even kidding. Like these dolls, it freaks me out almost. It's just, it's a little much. <laughs> wow. yeah. no, that's what that's what parents do. That's what grandparents do. Their parents for sure. Yes, mine. My, my <sighs> we had this broke. We have a broken down four wheeler, battery operated four wheeler thing. I'm getting ready to throw it out. My parents say, "Why are you throwing it out? Get it fixed." I said, "Well, they don't ride that." My three year old loves tractors and stuff like that, and and. Yeah. We went to we took him to Diggerland, and uh, up in Jersey, and you know he loves all these front end loaders and excavators and stuff like that. So of you know, obviously he had to have something to ride around in the yard with. So parents show up with one of those Peg Perigo John Deere tractor battery operated tractor things. It, it's it's what it's that's, what grandparents do. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Even if you don't ask for it, they just show up. Like this. This is supposed to be an office. Now it's a whole stinking playroom. (laughs) (laughs) Well. Oh, man. All right. So, everybody, hey, guys, thanks uh, thanks for another great show. And, Rick, uh, of course, anytime. You know that, man. Yeah. Love it. Appreciate it, guys. And and open door. You get bottom bottom center square. Yeah. Just let us know when you want to come on. Will do. Thank All you. right. Everybody have a great week. Peter, Nathan, Juan, we'll see you guys online. We'll see all you guys uh, in a chat room online. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. If our party works. <laughs> what? <laughs> if our party works. If our party yeah, works. Yeah, right. <laughs> party chat. All right. We'll see you everybody yeah. next Sunday night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Play on, gamers. Game on. See ya. And that's me too. <laughs> we had to wait for you to change that. I'm reading a comment on Twitter. Thanks to Cuphead, I've actually muttered the expletive effing candy corn eight hole numerous times. <laughs> nice. Game of the year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, visceral reactions to Cuphead. Good stuff, don't we? Very good.